to all of you we welcome you to yet another lecture, lecture demonstration program of the sri tyaga brahma gana sabha today we have with us dr chitra madhavan she is going to talk on the temples of kanchipuram the music is being provided by dr vijayalakshmi subramanyam she is being accompanied by anayambati sri venkata subramanyam and sri b ganapati raman the sabha has been doing this lecture demonstration program on a regular basis every month since april so far we have had programs done by mrs radha baskar sri madurai gs mani mrs chitra sri krishna and srimati lalgudi vijayalakshmi and the next four programs will be done by srimati rs dr rs jayalakshmi sri neiveli santana gopalan mrs vasundhara rajgopal and gatam karthik we request all of you to spread the word and please bring your friends and please come this is usually done on the first sunday morning at 10 o'clock except the next month because of the annual general meeting we are shifting it to the second week otherwise so we thank you once again and i leave the floor to dr chitra madhavan a very good morning friends i have to say my sincere thanks to uh, vani mahal tyaga brahmagana sabha for organizing uh, this series of lectems and for inviting me and on thanking you all on uh, behalf of the musicians as well um, it's a pleasure working with uh, dr vijay lakshmi we've done many such programs in the past i don't think we have done kanchipuram together this is the first time we are uh, doing it uh, it's a pleasure coordinating uh, with her um some disclaimers at the very beginning an hour and a half is not enough to talk about a place like kanchipuram or any other kshetra we have selected only seven uh, temples and i will be talking about them and uh, the musicians will be providing the music of these uh, kshetras there is much much more to say than what i'll be saying there's much much more to sing than what they will be singing it's just a gist Uh, of kanchipuram so we are starting with none other than the famous uh, kamakshi amman temple today when you when you think of kanchipuram you think of uh, goddess kamakshi immediately uh, this is one of the most famous one of the oldest temples in this uh, temple town uh, there is this famous verse which ends with you all know it nagareshu kanchi she is the best of the cities this is a moksha puri this is a place which has vishnu temples gelor we'll talk about it later shiva temples gelor this is the only shakti peetham in kanchipuram this is a stand alone temple for shakti goddess parvati as goddess kamakshi and this today is one of the oldest temples in this uh, town uh, kamakshi amman temple is also called kamakotam or tirukamakotam um, the city of kanchi was a very very big capital Uh, in the pre pallava times and also in the pallava times and there were four main roads we see them today as well the only thing is we don't recognize them to be the ancient uh, roads of kanchipuram they are called the rajivedi you have they have the kelaka rajivedi merka rajivedi etc and uh, kamakshi amman temple is situated on a road which is the rajivedi it is also one of the 18 shakti peetams of uh, india the famous shakti peetams where one part of the body of uh, dakshayani or sati the wife of shiva fell after she immolated herself in the sacrificial yagna of her father daksha and this temple is very closely traditionally connected with uh, the life of uh, adi shankara the famous advaita philosopher and he is said to have consecrated the shri chakra or the shri yantra in this uh, temple and also most of you and all of you would have gone to the temple and most of you would have noticed the small sanctum for adi shankara which enshrines a large image and it is close to the main sanctum for kamakshi amman in this temple huge gopurams in the four cardinal directions a large number of mantapams are also there many many sanctums for various gods and goddesses uh, because of time constraints we are not able to go into all the 
all the sanctums and visit all the gopurams and all the mantapams but one very very special feature of the kamakshi amman temple is the small niche that you have and you cannot miss it as you are going into the main sanadhi and that is a vishnu image and he is called kalvar kalvar permal this deity is also called adivaraha permal and this is actually one of the 108 divya deshams we all know that a divya desham is a kshetram uh, sung about in the pashuram or the tamil hymns of the arvars so it is indeed very interesting to find that there is a divya desham inside the kamakshi amman temple that to very close to the main sanctum and this has been sanctified by the hymns the pashuram of tirumangai arvar uh, the consort of this deity adivaraha permal also called kalvar is called anjilai valli nachiyar now that image is not there there are many scholars who feel that there was a separate temple for adivaraha permal and his consort once upon a long time back then maybe it was destroyed maybe it was close to the kamakshi amman temple we do not know and this deity has been brought into the temple premises and it has been sung about by tirumangalvar and this place is called tirukalvanur there are altogether 14 divya deshams inside the city of kanchi and this is a record by itself so um, this is tirumangalvar's uh, place many inscriptions are there inside the kamakshi amman temple unfortunately many are damaged they give us a lot of information about the age of the temple and many many other details the earliest inscription that we have found belongs to the pallava era of about the 7th or the 8th century ad and then you have lots of chola inscriptions a few inscriptions of the pandyas who overthrew the cholas and many many epigraphs belonging to the vijayanagara dynasty who did so much for this temple much of the temple as we see today is of vijayanagara and post vijayanagara workmanship also the main east facing temple is this uh, there are as i said four gopurams in the four uh, cardinal uh, directions the road there this temple has been recently renovated and it's in a pristine pure condition here is the very very large ta- temple tank where the nirali mantapam in the center uh, on the corners of the of the compound wall you have the lion because you can from afar notice that this is a shakti peetham this is a stand alone uh, shakti temple now there are lots of sculptures on the walls and on the pillars sometimes we notice them and sometimes we don't so we'll stop and look at some of these sculptures they i uh, don't want to hurt any religious sentiments this is a very great temple of great antiquity of great religious faith and importance but as far as architectural and sculptural wealth are concerned maybe they they are not up there along with same, some of the other temples of kanchipuram here you have brahma on the swan bhairava form of shiva bhairava actually means dog and you see him there with the dog uh, this is a very nice sculpture of shiva doing the urdhva tandava you see his left leg going right up if you see his left leg up like this note that this is an image from the very famous vataraneeshwarar temple in tiruvalangadu near arakonam even our very own kapali temple in mailapur on the east gopuram has a sculpture like this of shiva doing the urdhva tandava left leg lifted straight up and this is his dance competition with uh, kali that is a tradition of the tiruvalangadu temple this is a nice one you see goddess parvati on the rishabha vahana with an umbrella held over her head and a man leading the rishabha this is like a temple procession itself vishnu as he is seen as kalva permal adivaraha permal in that separate sanctum inside the temple uh, much later period sculpture this is vishnu with four hands as venugopala playing the flute this is very interesting this is uh, rati shooting arrows from her sugarcane bow generally we see only manmatha doing this here is rati also doing this a nice one of durga as mahishasura mardini look at how hanuman is balancing the sanjeevi parvata here and uh, not rama but tripurantaka murti that aspect of shiva who holds the bow and arrow and he killed three asuras with one arrow 
Varaha is here in his standing form. This is not Bhu Varaha, this is Varaha alone. Brahma is here again. This is very nice. This is uh, uh, Kodi Kanya, a lady with uh, creeper. Maybe she could also be Ganga Devi or Yamuna Devi, a lady holding uh, something to symbolize vegetation, irrigation, etc. Here is Bhuvaraha carrying Bhuma Devi in his hands. Shiva and Parvati riding on their Rishabhavahana. Nice sculpture of uh, Hiranyakashipu and Narasimha. But if this is beautiful, you must see the one in the Kailasanatha temple. We'll go there very soon. Again, Krishna holding the Shankar Chakra. It's very important. These are sculptures that people generally like seeing. One head, three bodies, and generally all temples have them. And these are the ones that are more photographed than those of the gods and goddesses. And Bali Sugriva fighting. Very, very typical Vijayanagara period or post-Vijayanagara period sculpture. There is much, much more to say about the Kamakshi Aman temple, her festivals, her rituals. But uh, that will wait for another day. And over to the musicians. Thank you, Chitra, and thank you, Vani Mahal, for this lovely morning. Today, of course, Chitra will be doing all the talking, but I just wanted to share a little bit about uh, uh, one of the very important composers who have sung on Kamakshi, which is uh, Sri Shyama Shastri. Uh, there's a very interesting story, and I won't take much time on this. Shama Shastri's family were the traditional archakas of the Kamakshi temple and then later the Bangaru Kamakshi in uh, Tanjavur. But as many of you know, Shama Shastri's mudra, Shama Krishna Sodari or Shama Krishna Sahodari. So, in the Sahodari, the Padi Nangarthu, Rumbaragana Kadarka. Of course, all stories, Nambinavalka, Adanajo. So, uh, Shama Shastri, the legend goes that he was singing one day and he uh, was a glass of pal and he was like, I was like, I was like, I was like, I was like, So, after he finishes his practice, he goes and he tells his mother, I was like, 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 so, Ambale and the Anna and Kuptalia. Anala Varoda Mudra, Shama Krishna, so the rain part. This ragam is also a creation of Shama Shastri. Devi Govind 
now go to a temple this is one of the 108 divya deshams and one of the 14 in kanchipuram it is today called the vaikuntha permal temple quite appropriately on any other day if you go here you will see about some 10 people or you five people at any given time but if you go on the vaikuntha ekadashi day there will be 2 lakh people here that's the name of the temple now it was originally called parameshwara Vishnu Griham or Parameshwara Bin Nagaram, and we'll see why. So this is uh, uh, Sanadi Thiru of the Kirak Rajavidi. Spelling is terribly wrong. It's not Vaigunda. It's Vaikunta Paramal Temple, and this is how it looks. If ever any of us wanted to see a unique, unique temple, it is this, and this temple alone in the heart of Kanchipuram is very close to the main bus stand. it's unique in many many ways it is like it is under the care of the archaeological survey of india and i would be failing in my duty if i didn't introduce this wonderful great lady to you see me nakshi look at her date line she passed away very young the first woman phd from the university of madras student of the great professor k nilakanth shastri and if we know anything about the vaikuntha permal temple today if we know anything about the pallava dynasty today is because of this one great human being see meenakshi a pranams to her so this famous famous vaikuntha permal temple has this name parameshwara vishnugriham or parameshwara vinnagaram it has been sung in praise of by tirumangai alvar who was a contemporary of the king who built this temple a contemporary of the king in whose reign this temple was built i correct myself the king didn't build it it was built in his reign so his the king's name was nandivarman pallavamalla and historians insert that second there because there was another nandivarman in, in before him now this is tirumangai alvar not from this temple but from another temple he came here in the 8th century historians date tirumangai alvar to the 8th century ad He has sung ten pashurams on this temple in his work called the Periya Tirumuri, and each pashuram ends with the line "Parameshwara Vinnagaram Aduve." Uh, this is the first uh, pashuram of his, and he mentions the Malayar king Pallavan, whom the world praises as Pallava the Great, the great bow wielder, and to whom other kings come to pay homage, uh, offers worship here at the temple of Parameshwara. Vinnagaram. Vinnagaram is Vishnu Griham. Parameshwara is Parameshwara. We'll come to that later. He gives glorious descriptions of Kanchi. That's this uh, Arvar. Surrounded by lotus tanks, high-walled city, beautiful Kanchi surrounded by golden mansions, beautiful Kanchi surrounded by water tanks, Kanchi surrounded by thickly populated mansions, none of which are there today. So Nandi Varman Pallavamalla, 731 to 796 A.D. Again, note the reign period. A very, very, very long time did he rule, and then very soon we'll find out why. So this is the ground plan of this uh, temple. Um, we'll there are there are outer prakarams and inner prakarams. Where I'm pointing is the main sandhi. Again, we'll come to this a little later. All of you would have been here to Mamalapuram. to a place that is famously called the five ratas and this is the biggest of the ratha we call it by the name dharmaraja ratha today uh, as wrong a name as possible now if you look at this this was a mono is a monolith it has been cut top down sculpted top down you notice a sanadi where i am pointing here and then a sanadi here and the third sanadi was to be at ground level but this fantastic structure unfortunately did not get completed now we are i am showing you an outline of the parameshwara vinnagaram and this temple too is in three levels on the ground floor is a seated vishnu and if you go to the back of the main vimanam and climb to the first floor you have a reclining vishnu there were there were steps leading to the top floor which has a standing image of vishnu but then that access to the top floor is not there today so you see in one vimanam in one temple you have the sitting amarnan reclining kidandan 
and the standing nindran forms of vishnu and this was the first temple to be built in such a way there were many others to follow so this is the amarnan he is seated vishnu over here and then there is a doorway at the back and it has steps leading up and it has steps leading down entrance and exit were also provided in such a way in the 8th century that you actually don't see these steps it's all concealed completely and then if you go to the first floor you worship at the shrine for aranganathan ranganatha and this is how it is access to the second floor i repeat was there once upon a time not there now i don't have a photograph of that perumal to show you very small perumal because you see the vimanam tapers like this so the ground floor sanadhi is big and then it becomes small and then it becomes very very small this is the utsava murti of uh, vaikuntha perumal that is vaikuntha valli tayar by his side and this is how the temple looks totally built of sandstone except for very little granite to support it at the base there is a separate sanctum for vaikuntha valli tayar and this is how she looks uh, the many parts of the temple were added to later as was this sanctum for goddess lakshmi as also the andal sanctum this is how the outer prakaram of this temple looks this is the entrance way it is a gopuram like this but it belongs to the 15th or 16th centuries ad this is not a pallava period gopuram it was built much later uh, that is not to say that this temple didn't have a gopuram it might have had one a small one which broke and then the vijayanagara rulers decided to build another but unfortunately this was not completed now what this temple is really well known for though 99.9% of the visitors who come to this temple don't know about it are the historical sculptures that are here when we go to any temple we know that there are religious sculptures go to a vishnu temple you will find the different avatars of vishnu and you find the various episodes from the ramayana the bhagavata purana etc etc but there is only one temple in the world that has a complete array of sculptures starting from the very beginning of a dynasty up to and including the time of the builder of that temple every incident of every king who ruled in kanchipuram of the pallava dynasty is portrayed here so this is the map that i ground plan of the temple that i showed you we enter like this you go here all the dots 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 that you find here are the pillars like this and if you this is where you do the pradakshinam on the ground floor as you do the pradakshinam you have lots of sculptures on the back wall they are all very badly eroded they are not in a good condition they are made of sandstone so since they are dirty we don't want to look at them but this is exactly what we should be looking at these are the sculptures in a long row on all four sides of the temple except for the gap where we enter through the door they are just all there done with painstaking detail so now here it's the pallavas claim that they originated from vishnu bhagavan vishnu so the first sculpture is of vishnu and then you have brahma vishnu's son and then you have a rishi called angiras and then you have a rishi called bharadwaja and then you have a rishi called samyu and then uh, sorry that was brihaspati and then samyu and then bharadwaja and then drona like here and then finally this is drona's son the person who is performing penance the great ashwatthaman ashwatthaman is supposed to have married a naga princess and their son this little child that you see lying down here is the first pallava this is what the pallava dynasty claims that they came from vishnu brahma brihaspati samyu bharadwaja drona ashwatthaman and then the first pallava you can see this first pallava is sleeping on something this is pallava that is sprout sprout is pallava and he is sleeping on it and the dynasty came to be called pallava so these are all many many historical sculptures of various kings this is a king seated on his simhasana with two brahmanas pouring the abhishek jala on him this is a coronation ceremony so this lady called sri meenakshi has studied each and every sculpture here and has given her a uh, report on it uh, i'll just show you some of them there is a king over here and he is witnessing a war you can see there is a war scene on the left hand side of the panel and again 
there is a blank space in the next panel it is not that it was cut out and taken away by some smugglers it's not like that it was left blank because it shows a very very bad period in pallava history when that famous emperor samudra gupta of the north of the gupta dynasty we all know him but none of us in south india know that samudra gupta sent a very large army to conquer the pallavas and he was very successful so this was samudra gupta's empire and you can see that that line comes right down to the south and in an inscription in allahabad it's called this is the allahabad pillar inscription this is inscription he says that he won over vishnu gopa of kanchi puram it's very clear now this blank space that is given there is the incident of samudra gupta having sent his army to the south and having defeated vishnu gopa of kanchi so then the pallava dynasty is divided into two separate uh, uh, sections branches and when one of the last rulers parameshwara varman the second of the main branch of the pallava dynasty died many many important people from kanchipuram like the mantris etc etc went to the family of bhima varman another branch of the pallava family and they went to the court of his descendant hiranya varman to find a suitable heir to the pallava throne so this culture shows you people going from kanchipuram to the court of hiranya varman maharaja and this is what she meenakshi says in her book and then they meet up with hiranyavarma uh, hiranyavarma maharaja and they ask him to come and rule over kanchipuram after all you are a distant relative please come and rule but hiranyavarma says no i won't come and he says please ask my four sons one i am pointing 2 3 4 on the left hand side of the panel you see four people they may be the four sons first son says no second son says no third son says no fourth son says yes i will go to kanchi i want to become emperor but he was only 12 years old at that time so they take him all these scenes are reflective of that they take this boy put him on an elephant march him all the way there now this this little ledge beneath these sculptures has the inscription a long inscription in tamil even recording the conversation that the people of kanchipuram had with hiranyavarman maharaja how they requested him how he said no ask my sons three sons said no fourth son said yes and the fourth son's name was pallava malla alayas parameshwara and he came to be coronated mm-hmm. as nandivarman so when he gave the the money for the building of this temple it came to be called parameshwara vishnu griham the house of vishnu of parameshwara not god parameshwara king parameshwara who was later called nandivarman so these are all the marching scenes so many historical scenes that we have over here and then finally in this corner you have the coronation of this little boy 12 years old but they show him as a bigger figure and then he goes to rule for more than 60 years and he leaves behind this wonderful wonderful temple for us you also have a miniature over here among the series of historical sculptures this one which is almost exactly like that vishnu that is on the topmost story so those of us who can't climb up and go to the topmost story and see vishnu there can have a look at this sculpture the next sculpture is actually a miniature of the vaikuntha perumal temple because i told you they have not left out even one incident in the reign of any of the kings So in the reign of Nandi Varman the Vaikuntha Perumal temple was constructed and they have shown that as well. Now on the outer walls of this temple you have many many inscriptions but of the Pallava period and unfortunately they are badly eroded. A nice temple tank which sometimes fills up with water. This temple is under the care of the Archaeological Survey of India. It is a temple that is a protected monument of national importance. Why not? It has much more to offer than any other temple that we know of. On the outer walls, clearly um, showing that it is of Pallava workmanship, are these prancing lions which we see. It is a temple in active worship, everyday worship. This is the Dwaja Stambham. On the outer walls, you have many sculptures. Again, unfortunately, badly eroded. This is Hayagriva. This is Varaha carrying Bhuma Devi. You can see the bare outlines. You can see Narasimha fighting with Hiranyakashipu over here. This is a rare sculpture. This is on the second level. This is uh, of Vishnu. I'm showing you the same thing. Note the number of hands. He has eight hands here. 
this is called ashtabuja perumal rare to see just for a moment taking you to a place called badami of 6th century there you have an ashtabuja perumal image this is of chalukyan workmanship the chalukyas were the hated enemies of the pallavas and then i'm bringing you to kanchipuram itself to the ashtabuja perumal sanadi street here you have a temple for ashtabuja perumal like this this is ashtabuja perumal temple going to cambodia and there you have a very very famous ashtabuja perumal this vaikuntha perumal temple has many many more inscriptions down to the time of the cholas and later periods also it is uh, all these Uh, the uh, details given by these inscriptions uh, a lot of donations were given to the this temple and it is going on till today uh, it is a three story temple the very first of its kind um, it has three different forms of vishnu enshrined there sanctified by the hymns of tirumangi alvar which makes it one of the 108 divya deshams it has historical sculptures that are not seen in any other temple in any other part of the world and much 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 more because of time constraints i'm stopping over to the musicians to sing a pashram sul van sul porul da aviya sul we now go to one of the best known temples of kanchipuram the ekamranatha or the ekamreshwara temple it is a padal petra stalam meaning that it has been sanctified by the hymns of the nayanmars among the 63 upper nyana sambandhar and sundarmurti nayanar have come here and sung the glory of this uh, deity it is 
the first of the 32 padal petra stalams in tondai mandalam which is the northern part of tamil nadu and the southern part of andhra pradesh tondai nadu and tondai mandalam are the traditional names of this uh, geographical region um one of the important features of the ekambaranatha temple that many people are not aware of is that like the kamakshi amman temple here too inside the compound is a divya desham and this divya desham is for a small deity called nila tingal tundatta not as small as the kamakshi amman temple but slightly bigger he is also called chandrachuda perumal and tirumangai alvar has praised this deity this too possibly like kalvar could have been a stand alone temple and later brought into the fold of the compound of the ekamanada temple we all know of the famous panchabhuta stalams uh, four of which are in tamil nadu and one in present day andhra pradesh these enshrine lingams uh, which uh, are of the five elements and the first of these is kanchipuram which is the prithvi lingam then we have tejas that is tirunamalai up water that is in uh, J- the J- tiruvannaika temple and then you have akash that is uh, chidambaram and uh, tejas that is in uh, tiruvannamalai so these are the five and the lingam here is the famous prithvi lingam most of us know the story that uh, parvati was ke- ha- came to the earth and she worshiped a shivalingam made of sand and mud it was to have been washed away by a sudden uh, flood of the river vegavati but to prevent it from being washed away goddess parvati hugged it and it is said that the marks of her body and her bangles are still there on the lingam because it is a lingam not made of stone abhishekam is not offered to it uh i don't have a photo obviously to show you but when you do go to this uh, temple and you do worship this lingam please look at the back wall behind the shiva lingam and you will find a very lovely form of shiva called the soma skanda murti that is shiva with parvati and their son skanda between them or on parvati's lap that is the general soma skanda murti that clearly reveals the pallava character of this uh, temple of course this temple could have been much much older but the soma skanda murti clearly reveals that the pallavas had contributed much to this temple there is another interesting episode uh, we all know that sundramurthy nayanar had a wife called paravai nachiyar in uh, tiruvarur and then he came to tiruvattur and married another lady called sangali nachiyar and having promised her not to go out of uh, tiruvattur that was the promise to cut a very long story short he did step out of tiruvattur our very own tiruvattur in north madras and he did want to go back to tiruvarur but because uh, he had broken the promise the minute he stepped out of tiruvattur he became blind and when he reached kanchipuram and worshiped in the ekamarnatha temple he is said to have got back sight in his left eye finally he went to tiruvarur and got back the sight in both his eyes so that is another thing connected with the ekamarnatha temple stala vriksham is the amra ekamra natha and uh, it is under this maram that parvati is said to have worshiped the famous shivalinga so let us go into this temple it is a campus that has grown over many 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 centuries the pandavas and the cholas and the pandyas and vijayanagar and post vijayanagar chieftains kings all having added to it this towering gopuram the tallest in kanchipuram was built in the reign of krishna devaraya 16th century ad we go in further we see other gopurams and this huge mantapam maha mantapam through which we have to enter to go into the temple campus look at the doors of this temple huge doors and the door stoppers that are here and uh, we go into the maha mantapam we find it clearly of vijayanagara workmanship of about the 15th or 16th centuries so there are there are the pillars like this completely of uh, stone uh, granite but very beautifully sculpted something's going wrong here but anyway uh, this is parvati look at how she is standing on tiptoe look at the flames of the fire there this is a panchagni tapas the famous one her hair has grown one hair one hand on top of her head and standing on tiptoe very beautifully sculpted shiva as rishabantika leaning on the bull is here muruha subramanya is also here these are slightly later period uh, hanuman is here 
small sculpture at the base of a pillar. This is the mango tree. You can also see the mangoes on it and the Shivalinga that Parvati is said to have worshipped. The detail here is very nice. It's just that we don't notice many of these things. Shiva and Parvati over here. The long, long corridors of this temple. Shiva in his form as Bhikshatana Murti, where he comes as a beggar or a mendicant and he goes through the forest called Darukavana to repent for the sin of having plucked off the fifth head of Brahma. Now this is a sculpture we'll have to pay attention to. Anybody looking at this will directly say this is Rama and Hanuman is there. This is not Rama nor is that Hanuman. This is Manmata with his sugarcane bow. You can see the split end up there. And this is Nandi warning him not to let that arrow go. And Manmata let the arrow go and the rest is history. To again show you that this is Manmata, though this is a weather-worn sculpture, if you look at the base of the chariot, you'll sign, you see two parrots pulling it forward. The parrot or the kili is, one of the, is the vahana of Manmata. And then uh, Durga here, multiple arms as Simha Vahini. And then nice one of Nandi playing on the Mridangam. Nandi is a great exponent of the Mridangam. Again, Shiva doing the Urdhva Tandava. Look at how he has wrapped his hands around his leg. And this is the Abhaya Hasta. And that hand and that foot are together over there. Bhairava, once again. Nartana Ganesha. Rama over here. And uh, the Lingodbhava form of Shiva with Vishnu going burrowing down as Varaha and Brahma flying up as a swan to find the feet and the head of uh, Shiva respectively. Such a nice simple sculpture of Gaja Samhara Murti. Shiva tearing open the hide of an elephant that he had slain. The elephant being actually a demon over here. Uh, the temple tank called Shiva Ganga and the cloistered Mantapa all around it. Uh, many, many of the tanks of Kanchipuram are inside the compound of the temple. Many of them. This is interesting. Uh, this is what the Mantapa looks like. The Nandi that is on the outside gazing directly at the Prithvi Linga. Many a Vahana in this temple for many a festival and the Amra Vriksha. Ek Amra Nata. That is the name over here. Now, on the pillars, you will find a number of designs. Remember that Kanchipuram is a weaving center. And many, many of these designs have been copied by the weavers. You will find it either on the pallu or the border of your uh, saris, sometimes Veshti also. There is the 16 pillar mantapa in front of the temple. Nobody actually notices it much. I want you to see some of the spectacular, it's a later, much later period mantapa. Shiva doing a Tandava over here. Uh, this is Ravana lifting Mount Kailash. Have you ever seen Ravana in this pose, bending down with the with the kailash on his back like this. This is how it is. Shiva's uh, Natana. And then Bhairava. Narsimha standing like this. Very rare. And then this is interesting. Kurma avatar of Vishnu worshipping the Shivalinga. Over here. Another one. Same. Kurma worshipping the Shivalinga. And many, many more. Time for music.
कर महदास listening to such beautiful music one doesn't feel like coming back to a mundane subject like history but anyway we go to another divya desham this time to the pandava duta perumal temple again uh, not many people go there because they don't know it's there the three arvars four arvars have sung buda arvar pe arvar thirumanshi arvar and uh, thirumangai arvar this is how the deity looks pandava duta the stala puranam of this temple says that krishna went as the duta of the pandavas to the court of duryodhana who had planned to kill him 
so he had created a simhasana or a throne and hidden wrestlers mallas underneath and he had made the seat very weak so duryodhana believed that when krishna sat down it would give way and all the mallas would kill him krishna sat and immediately he took on the vishwarupa form and there he is this deity more than 30 feet tall if you go into the temple your the height of your head will be with this uh, folded leg of krishna and then you have to look up like that and uh, see him this deity is not made of stone it is made of stucco or sudai and it is a pre pallava temple i mean by that most of the temples in kanchipuram as we see it, see them today are of the pallava times this is even before that and possibly belongs to the sangam age of approximately the second or the third centuries ad now this is a very important uh, uh, utsava murti in this temple it is of a great scholar called arulal perumal embarumanar who was an advaitin and who was defeated by ramanuja in debate and subsequently became a disciple of this very great shri vaishnava acharya this is how the gopuram of the temple looks and uh, it is a small temple very much in active worship the place is actually called tiru padaham that is the traditional place of this temple and it is very close to the ekamranada temple note that's a very tall vimanam because the huge deity enshrined underneath it the goddess here is rukmini because he is pandava duta he is krishna in the temple tank the pushkarini is called matsya pushkarini lots of inscriptions over here you can notice them at the base thankfully they are still intact this is very interesting dated 1075 of kulotunga chola the first a play person called arulal devan of kanchipuram provided the temple with a garden nandavanam also paid their gardeners and their families if we think we are giving donations to a temple today think of what they have done in the past another inscription of kulotunga chola the third reign mentions the temple of tir padagat alvar alvan alvan refers to god vishnu not an alvar and the supply of two nari of curd for offerings to the deity remember he is krishna he is very fond of dairy products so curd was offered to him and another one gives 32 cows to the temple and the milk would be turned to ghee and the ghee would be used for lighting a lamp and a perpetual lamp he says how can the lamp be perpetual because the cows will have calves and they will produce milk and that milk will also be used and it is supposed to go for eternity that is the padahat permal and over to the musicians dev devane Bye. 
படகத்தும் ஊரகத்தும் வெக்கடை கிடாதது we go to the most famous vishnu temple in kanchipuram that of varadaraja perumal and here i have to acknowledge that this is the greatest scholar who has worked on this temple professor k v raman and much of what anyone says today on this temple is from this book uh, the stala puranam of this temple is called hastigiri mahatmyam it's a dialogue between the two rishis bhrigu and narada and it is said that brahma performed a huge yagam and the present vardaraj perumal came out of the fire of that yagam and he stayed on in hastigiri so this is how the main image looks it's a tall image and uh, i wonder if you can see that this right hand side is protruding out a little his vastram is on top of that it is because it is actually he is standing on the jwala or the flames out of which he came though because the vastram is on top we don't uh, see the flames there the utsava murti the goddess lakshmi here is enshrined as perindevi tayar in a separate uh, sanctum that's perindevi tayar uh, vardraja swami has been praised in the pashurams of buda talwar namalwar and tirumangi alwar it is the foremost vishnu temple in kanchipuram and this uh, gopuram is the west gopuram Varadaraj Bermal faces west and not east over here this is the temple tank very very famous temple tank called the Ananta Saras and you see this mantapam that mantapam is commonly found in most of the temple tanks but you see another structure over here it is underneath this that the original image of Varadaraj Bermal called Atti Varadar made of the wood of the fig tree which was taken out at a point of time when it was possibly damaged and the present murti of varadaraj perumal was consecrated so that original atti varadar is kept in a watertight chamber underneath this temple tank and every mandalam every 40 years he is taken out and uh, the public can have a darshan this is going to happen in 2019 and after that it's going to be 40 years we better go in 2019 so then on the banks of the uh, um, ananta saras is this beautiful 100 pillared hall built in the vijayanagara times and these are the pillars inside each made of a single stone single piece of granite and this is how it is note that the horse rider has put a spear into this man and is even coming out the other side the detailing is mind blowing you see vishnu here this is nice this is also nice this is vishnu seated under adi sesha some sculptures are very unique this is vishnu on garuda very common but why i am pointing it out in this temple is because the garuda seva uh, festival in the vaikashi brahmotsavam of this temple is very very unique when vardaraj perumal is going back into the temple it's a grand festival he stands outside the gopuram for a minute on garuda and he looks in a particular direction and the umbrellas are lowered it suppose it's believed that he is supposed to give darshan to a very great devotee of his called doddacharya who lived in kanchipuram and in his old age he had to leave kanchi for his native place which is now present day sholingur so over there in sholingur he was standing facing the vardaraj perumal temple and bemoaning the fact that he could not see the vardaraj utsavam So Varadaraj turns around and he gives a darshan over there and the kodai is lowered so nobody else sees him only Dodacharya can see him this happens year after year after year and this is a vishwarupam of god uh, Vishnu over here this is a very interesting sculpture we'll have to notice it this is as though Varadaraj Perumal is coming out of the flames of the yaga that Brahma performed you see him over here actually coming out of the fire this is how he is in the main sanctum also again multi armed vishnu and you have all the avatars this is matsya also matsya kurma varaha is here several forms of varaha you can see over here and then narsimha standing 
Trivikrama, Vamana, Trivikrama. You can see Mahabali giving the Danam to Vamana over here and Shukracharya. Dasharatha with three queens, very unique. You don't see it anywhere else. Rama, mini stories. Hanuman, Vali Sugriva fight. Rama either taking the ring or giving the Chudamani to Rama is here. Krishna, four arms with Shanka Chakra. Ah, this is very interesting. This is a person called Tirukachi Nambi, Guru of Ramanujacharya, who did great service to Vataraji Pirmal. He used to do the Alavata Kainkarya, the fanning service. And it is said that Vardaraja Perumal used to speak to Tirukachi Nambi and is using Tirukachi Nambi as the medium, he conveyed the great principles of Visishta Advaita, the philosophy of Vaishnavism to Ramanujacharya to take forth to the world. And this is how Tirukachi Nambi is seen in this temple in, in, on various pillars etc. And what he holds on his shoulder is the ala vata or the fan made of the leaves of the banyan tree. Great, great Acharya of Sri Vaishnavism. When you go into this thousand, hundred pillared mantapa, uh, you see the central platform on which Tayar and Perumal are kept and worshipped uh, on special days. You see here the face of a tortoise and the flippers are on all four sides. It's as though the entire platform is on the back of the Kurma avatara. You have to notice that. And the sunshade of the temple, if you see it from below, it's so beautifully carved. This temple also has a rare shrine for Danvantari. The prasadams of this temple are very well known. They're as delicious as can be. One vouches for it, especially the Kanjivaram idlis. And uh, other pillars have other sculptures, Trivikrama, etc. The insignia of the Vijayanagara Empire, the Varaha with the dagger in front, and the Surya and Chandra because it was their promise to us that as Varaha saved Bhuma Devi, they would save South India from the marauding invaders from the north as long as Surya and Chandra were there with the help of their sword. And they kept their promise for more than 450 years. The paintings on the walls of the Vardaraja Perumal temple belong to the 17th century Vijayanagara times. They depict the 108 Divya Deshams, though it beats me as to how in the 17th century they had access to the 106 Divya Deshams and they have put the paintings of Perumal and Tayar Tatrupam. That is the only word that I can use as they saw them. When today in the 21st century we find it difficult to go and visit uh, all the 106. This um, lizard is a big thing in this temple. We understand there is one that is a golden Kavacham and the silver Kavacham. It's a common enough thing. Any temple anywhere will have lizards and other forms of life because the temple is supposed to be a microcosm of the macrocosm and every living thing is portrayed on the ceiling, pillars, walls, etc. of the temple. But it is a belief in India, a strong belief that when a lizard falls on any part of the body, it could signify a good omen or a bad omen. And we go to the Panchangam and look it up and see whether it is good or bad. And there is a belief that if you come to the temple and touch the lizards which are on the ceiling, you will be warded of all evil effects. It's a belief. And not many people know that the rear Gopuram, the east Gopuram is a far more beautiful Gopuram than the west or the main Gopuram. This is very much like the main Gopuram of the Ekamarnatha temple built in the reign of uh, Krishna Devaraya, tall, tall Gopuram. If you go in from the east Gopuram, you see the rustic side of the uh, Vardaraja Perumal temple. There is no crowd and you come in, you feel that you've gone back to the Vijayanagara period. You come back like this. Lots of trees and then you see the Vaishnavite emblem and these are all some monuments are not in a good state of repair but nevertheless that feel comes in when you come in from the East Gopuram. The West Gopuram after all is the, uh, is the main Gopuram. Dikshitar was there, Thyagaraja Swami was there. In all their uh, songs, they definitely mention the Garuda Utsava or the Garuda Seva, which is a high point. There is so much more, more than 300 inscriptions on the walls of this uh, temple, giving various donations. Vedas were taught in it. Vedanta Deshika, the great Sri Vaishnavite preceptor, was here in Kanchipuram. He has praised it. Kura Tarvan named the Acharya of Vaishnavism, they have been into the Vardaraja Perumal temple. So much more to say, but we'll hear it through the music. <laughs> Oh, 
Another small temple in Kanchi, again one of the 14 Divya Deshams, is the Ulahalanda Paramal Temple. The compound of this temple enshrines four Divya Deshams, Uragam, Niragam, Karagam, and Karvanam. Uh, again, sung about by Tirumirishai and Tirumangai Alvars. This is how Ulahalanda Paramal looks. Like 
the pandava duda perumal this is also a very very colossal image up to a height of more than 30 feet not made of stone but sudai stucco it is again a pre pallava deity approximately of the second or third centuries ad and magnificent absolutely this is how the gopuram of the temple we go in completely covered with inscriptions but in a country that has no sense of history this is how they are covered with paper uh, a temple in active worship we enter through this mantapam the vimanam of this temple is very tall because it has to enshrine this very large deity it's called the sara vimanam the thayar the goddess of the ulagananda perumal temple is called aranavalli thayar in most books you will find it given as komalavalli that is not correct this is aranavalli thayar and that is her sanctum these are the other divya deshams maybe they were separate separate at one point of time and they have been brought into the compound of the ulagananda perumal temple this is nirghat perumal and uh, this is how he looks inside the main garbhagraha also he looks like this we come through the prakaram and then we see Ghar- karagat perumal and this is how he looks he is seated inside the main sanctum he looks like this and goddess over here and then you have karvana perumal and he looks like this as the main deity in his shrine numerous are the inscriptions you see on the walls of this temple they are like this the pushkarini or the temple tank just outside the temple premises is vamana pushkarini vamana trivikrama note the connection lots of inscriptions over here by kings queens etc there is one particular inscription i want to show you it's a copper plate inscription and it mentions that uttama chola the immediate uh, predecessor of raja raja chola deposited with two classes of weavers in kachipped that is kanchipuram 200 pieces of gold since there were no managers in the temple of hari that is the ulhal and the peramal temple to supervise the income from the gold invested the king appointed weavers the patashalan for the work of temple management so the weavers of kanchi were actually looking after the management of this uh, temple and the reference is also to the weavers of royal garments which means silk weavers royalty was silk so this is the madras museum plates it is there in our madras museum in the main gallery and it gives us a lot of information about the ulahalanda perumal's temple's connection with the weavers of kanchipuram this is rare indeed so we know that weaving was a very very uh, well entrenched industry in the city of kanchi in the time of the cholas and then much earlier also putravanangitulamil putravan
the final uh, temple of this presentation is the very famous Kailasanatha temple in Kanchipuram. Uh, this temple belongs to the 8th century to the reign of a king called Narsumavarman II, better known as Rajasimha. The compound wall of the temple is particularly very beautiful. This is how the temple looks. It is under the care of the Archaeological uh, Survey of India. Uh, there are two shrines here. The one at the back is the famous Kailasanatha. Original name is Rajasimheshwara, constructed in the reign of Rajasimha Pallava. The front one over here, where I am pointing, is called the Mahendra Varmeshwara Griham. This is also a Shiva Sanadi, and it was built by Rajasimha's son, Mahendra Varman, who unfortunately predeceased him. Uh, this is an old photo of the Gopuram of this temple. When you think of Gopuram in Tamil Nadu, you think of a tall uh, skyscraping structure. This is one of the first Gopurams that you see here. The small thing above the doorway, uh, inconspicuous. This is the first proper Gopuram that you see in Tamil Nadu. This is the Prakaram of this temple, a grand Prakaram. This is when temples were becoming bigger and bigger. You find about 58 shrines around altogether. Paintings from the Pallava period are also seen in the gaps between these small sanctums. All these are small, small sanctums in the Prakaram. And you see very, very uh, old paintings with only traces, but at least they are there. Uh, going around the Prakaram is a delight for the common man as well as for the connoisseur of art history. This is how the pillars look with the lion at the base, very typically Pallava. This is from a work, a small episode in the Mahabharata made very famous by a scholar named Bharavi who lived in the Pallava times. This is a work known as a Kirartha Arjuniyam. This is Arjuna and Shiva fighting for Shiva to test Arjuna's strength so that he could give him a very powerful weapon called the Pashupata Astra. The person with the crown is Arjuna and the other is Shiva. Similarly, you see Narsuma fighting with Hiranyakashipu. I don't know whether you can see traces of red on the face of Narsuma. All these sculptures were painted over. This is an old picture of how the Mahendra Varmeshwara shrine looked. All these are sculptures on the walls of the temple. A baby Ganesha, Durga, beautiful Durga, a very confident. And then this is the Lingot Bhava form of uh, Shiva. Uh, this is Dakshina Murti. This kind of Dakshina Murti we have never ever seen anywhere. He is Yoga Dakshina Murti. You can see the Yoga Patta across his knees. This is how the entire sculpture actually looks. And if you look at the side, you can see animals, um, wild animals, because Dakshina Murti <coughs> is supposed to have preached in the forest, and there are also rishis sitting and listening to him. Shiva as Gangadhara, receiving the Ganga on his head. This is how the entire sculpture looks. Shiva as Kala Samhara Murti, where he vanquishes Yama, who was about to take away his devotee Markandeya. Shiva as Bhikshatana Murti, as the mendicant. Shiva as Nataraja, look at this Tandava form. We've never ever seen such a beautiful image. Many, many forms of Shiva <coughs> are here as Nataraja. Here is Urdhva Tandava. He has taken his leg, um, sorry, leg right up to the top of his head. You can see Nandi dancing by his side. You can also see a small Shivagana dancing by his side. On the compound wall, we are used to seeing Nandis. Have we ever seen an elephant on a compound wall? Please go to the Kailasanatha temple. At the base of the temple, you have like a border, many, many Shivaganas, Bhutaganas, his followers, dancing away as happily as they can. This is it. Cheerful, happy. And in the middle of all these Bhutaganas, you see Ganesha doing the Urdhva Tandava like his father. Ga the leader of the Ganas, Ganapati, Gana Isha. He is the leader of the Ganas. Inscriptions are there in this temple galore. Many, many, many inscriptions. S there are about 300 biradas or titles of King Rajasimha. Not a modest ruler at all. He has left behind 300 of his titles. He was like Narada on playing on a veena. She veena Naradaha. Atodya Tumburu. He was like another divine sage. Tumburu in playing on the Atodya. She Agama Priyaha. 
ఫాలోవర్ ఆఫ్ ద ఆగమాస్ దిస్ టెంపుల్ వాజ్ బిల్ట్ అకార్డింగ్ టు ద కోడ్స్ ఆఫ్ ద ఆగమాస్ శ్రీ ఆగమ అనుసారి హీ హూ ఫాలోడ్ ద ఆగమాస్ శ్రీ దేవదేవ భక్త ఈశాన్య శరణ్య ఆల్ ఆఫ్ దెమ్ డీటెయిలింగ్ హిస్ గ్రేట్ డివర్టీ డివోషన్ ఫర్ గాడ్ శివ now these inscriptions <clears throat> uh, there's so much to say but i'll just stop with saying that some of these inscriptions are in, in calligraphy uh, this is a script that you're seeing but here you're looking at the head of a peacock the neck of a peacock and the feathers of a peacock can you see that this is the beak of the peacock also and then lots of designs beautiful designs in this temple there is a nandi facing the main sanctum in a separate nandi mantapa but the mandi mantapa is broken the entire thing is sandstone entire temple is sandstone with very little granite to support it this is uh, how it looks the pushkarini of this uh, temple safeguarded by the archaeological survey of india this is one of the best best temples of uh, kanchipuram it is a little away from the main town a uh, protected monument of national importance probably the best of pallava art and the best of pallava architecture and definitely the best of pallava inscriptions in the main sanctum on the rear wall you see the somaskanda murti and before it a huge shivalinga there is a pradakshina an inner pradakshina the likes of which you would never have seen you have to bend in and go out do the pradakshina and while coming out you will see a very very small exit that's when you panic so you have to lie down and pull yourself you have to crawl out of the pradakshina only the brave hearted should do it the outer pradakshina is there for all of us to see a treasure trove of shaivite iconography it has never been better than this over to the musicians kailas nahathe nasam
Wonderful trip to the temples of Kanchipuram. We thank Dr. Chitra Madhavan, Dr. Vijay Lakshmi Subramanyam, Mr. Venkat Subramanyam, and Ganapati Raman for providing this wonderful fair. Thank you once again. So we look forward to meeting you again on the 9th of September. We'll send the details of the program by email and SMS. Thank you very much. <laughs>